So probably we'll see more bugs coming through uh, because of the extent people will start using more and more uh, GNU tools for Arc and probably the main driver of that is, is the Intel Arduino uh, uh, po um, device. So what are our goals? We wanted to develop obviously a cleaner, simple Binutils backend for it. Arc is not very complicated processor, so we wanted to simplify a lot and to have a very clean backend there. Obviously, use uh, table-driven uh, design. It's all ports are doing this, exactly the same thing, but we wanted this because we wanted to cope with continuous evolution of ARC. So basically, we can have different uh, versions of the same processor, and that evolves in terms of months because, yeah, ARC is a soft core first, and we the harder guys are coming with patches each month. So we have to somehow cope with those new patches and the table drive, uh, driven design looks, looked on us very good uh, uh, yeah, feature to, to hold all the, all the arc um, modification. We wanted to be easy to debug and easy to maintain the source code. Um, also, we wanted to avoid duplication of the information, so we wanted to have obviously the same database operate, oper, um, Oper, um, operation database for the assembler and disassembler and whatever else we we need. Yeah. And also we wanted, obviously, to par partially or fully generate ARC specific backend in some sort like CGEN does. And why we wanted to, to generate ARC backend? Because we wanted to be correct when we implement an opcode, and also it's, it's a matter of time. So we, when you have thousands of instructions, you really want to put them in the main line without spending too much time in typing around those instructions. So, yeah, obviously the uh, table-driven design is heavily used in our backend, so it's somehow it's our mindset because why? Because we can out generate most of those tables or try to generate them or you know writing in the future some scripts which can generate that. At this moment, so we organize opcodes, the instruction operands, instruction flags, and other information like that. We organize as a table. It's not nothing new. Other targets are doing the same. But also we try to hand, uh, handling of the uh, relocation, how we, how we handle the relocation, the pseudo instruction, how we uh, uh, perform the assembly time relaxation, again, to, uh, to organize this as table. So everything was like, why want this? Because we can use this fact that we can auto-generate. So, the only thing which we had to do is to find an instruction database, which obviously you find it on the, you always you find this thing in your company. And we found it with the hardware guys. And it was one guy with there, which was having an XLS table with all the instruction opcodes and whatever, everything, which, uh, well not, uh, not everything, almost the most important opcodes which ARC supports. So, we already knew that his, uh, uh, his instruction database is correct because he was using those, uh, uh, this XLS file to generate hardware tests. So based on that, we, it's easy. We say, okay, we have this. Let's generate as much as you can. We, have, we can generate the assembler. Obviously, that disassembler, which is using the same opcode. Part of the BFD regarding the relocation, more Cupertino will say, and we can actually test our implementation, which I think was one of the biggest problems. So my boss says, how do you test if everything works? So I'm testing again using the database, and I will show you how. 
But first, let's see how gas looks. I mean, if it's a very high level. I mean, I'm trying to do so. So an instruction looks like, another instruction looks like that. You know, we have the mnemonic, the add, we have the flag, which is optional, and then we have the operands, which sometimes I can call as arguments. Then we have the encoding there. You can see that the encoding for A, it's denoted here, the encoding for C, it's here, but the encoding of B, it's here and here. So it's partition over the opcode. This information basically is the information which you have in the database. We have, uh, and this information is used when we find the opcode, basically. So how we organize the assembler, we, I'm, I try to make it, you know, I try to make things easily to be um, understood. So I said, let's first tokenize the, the arguments. So I, I tokenize the arguments, the flags. Uh, the arguments are stored as expressions, which is sometimes not the best way to do, but well, it worked. And then having the, the information about mnemonic uh, arguments and flags, when I'm assembling, I'm assembling the tokens here, I'm finding the, the opcode match based on whatever we have in the uh, database. So database is also used when we assemble the instruction because we need to know how we insert the operands into the um, um, uh, instruction itself into the opcode. So that is again something which uh, the, 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 the uh, database generates. So what we generate from the database, it's not only you know, the opcode, but also how we ins insert an instruction and how we extract the instruction, uh, how we insert an opcode, uh, an operand, operand, and how you extract the operand, which is the extraction operand, it's used by the disassembler. So obviously, in the assembler, the, the biggest chunk where we used the, 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 the instruction database was to ge automatically generate the opcode table. So that was the, by far the biggest chunk. And we had a bit of target specific part, so that it's mostly you know, common. It's no, with, with no, um, no specific really specific part besides the, the, the relaxation. And we use, may, we use the database, so as I say, to generate the assembler opcode table, which is in this file, if you look into the uh, uh, binutils tree. Then we partially generate operands table. So parts of that file is, we, we try to generate. And also try to generate the extract and insert function. So as I said, the extract and insert function are used to insert an operand in the opcode uh, op or to extract it when you do the disassembling. So also used the insert function when we solve the uh, relocations, so in BFD. So this give us kind of, let's say, um, we try to be sure that we, have, we access the same function in BFD in, uh, a, uh, when we do assembling, so we don't have mismatches there, which is very important because usually all the errors which we had were because uh, in the relocation we were doing one type of, of operation and the, in, the, in the assembling, when we are doing assembling, we were, uh, we were doing different type of you know, operation when we were inserting an, an operand. So how I did the testing of the assembler? So uh, basically you can also generate the, uh, the, the Jagnu test, but I wanted to test the assembler against all the assembler or in-house assembler. So Synopsis has its own in-house uh, uh, compiler and assembler tools which they sell. So I use that assembler. So I'm using the database. I generate some assembly file based on whatever is here. And then 
using the new assembler, I, uh, I assembled us, uh, the, the test file in parallel with, with uh, the same file was given to, to the third party assembler. I disassemble it and then I compare the files. So I did this for 90% of the instructions which we introduced there just to figure out, just to be sure that everything what we did there is correct. Um, so it is basically <coughs> made uh, our by manager very happy because we show that at least the free tools are as good as the, the paid tools. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a challenge uh, sometimes. Uh, and um, what you want might ask, okay, what is the future of this database thing which you do? So basically, we want to go further with this uh, database uh, uh, idea. So at this moment, we partially script. We, we don't have it. It's, it's a proof of concept for binutils. But actually, what I want to do is to uh, generate, let's say, parts of the GC compiler. So the easy one are the built-ins. And you can obviously, like CGen does, you can, you can do uh, 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 the simulator to generate. I haven't done it. I started to do it, but, and uh, to have the documentation. For the simulator, obviously, you need to annotate your database with the semantic of what, of, uh, what the instruction does. But yeah, we are, I'm trying to do this. This is a manual or so it takes some time. What is very interesting when you use a such a database is that you can have the overview of what is going on with your architecture. So even bef start before starting the implementation, so if you start from, from scratch implementing your, your uh, bin utils, I would say use a database because then you, you, know, you know what kind of short immediates you have. You don't miss them because if you put in MySQL, you just make an a uh, 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 query on that, and uh, and you get exactly what what short immediates you have, what what kind of uh, uh, um, uh, types of uh, yeah uh, instructions you can have, different types of instruction, different flavors, how many yeah what types of operands you have, so that it's extremely extremely useful. Besides of that, if this let's say picture will be complete, which I like to have it, then you can imagine that I can do quickly design space exploration because I can just change something in the database and then rerun everything and re getting, regenerating all the tool chain or most of the tool chain. And you know, giving a really quick feedback to the hardware guys, like saying, okay, this instruction makes sense or this instruction might not make sense depending obviously this on the test bench. But this, this is the, to be honest, this is the second time when we use this uh, approach. And uh, I think uh, it, to, to be honest, makes sense when, when you have an architecture which is like a template, like ours, which is you know, very fluid in terms of instruction which are in and which are out. So what are my summaries? So after this, uh, uh, Cupertino will take over. We'll talk, he will talk about uh, BSD, it's the part where he made most of the work. So we, by using this database idea, we quickly generate our backend. So most of the time which you spend using the bin, uh, uh, crafting the bin utils, I think it's well, once you do the BFD, but I think if you have bare metal, you can do the BFD quite quickly. But adding, just adding those tons of instructions in. So we, we're actually generating more over 19K lines of C code, only using this idea. Then, or partially generated, because we still had to massage it a bit, but the, the massage was, time was way less than actually writing all the of code by, your, by hand. And we like this because we use a common database. So if something is wrong, it's wrong in only one place. And we fix that problem there. And 
everything should propagate to you know the whole tool chain. Then we can we could quickly test what we did. So that was you know very good for our managers. You know they could say okay your tool is good. We can say something. We can you know. Uh, um, and yeah, obviously the, our future, my future, what I would like to do is to extend, as I showed to you, to the compiler, because this is very important. It will give us, again, you know, a flexibility and also correctness when you do, when you generate those uh, RTX patterns. And instruction patterns, sorry. And, um, and also, we like to make the, those scripts which we did, which are just prototyping, more robust, more, you know, more, more for to be able to generate the backend without a human inter intervention, which probably would be great, and maybe others would like to adapt them for their backends when they do a new uh, a new port. So this is. Do you have questions about the assembler? Yes. Can we please switch back to the slide with the, with the testing? Yes. So you're mentioning that you're doing a disassembly test again and comparing the results of the disassembly. Yeah. Test. So you're also testing the disassembler and the assembler in one step? No, it's the disassembler of the third party. So the third party tools are, is having an assembler and disassembler. So I'm using only the GNU assembler as a, as a test, uh, under test. And when I, I disassemble, I'm using the uh, synopsis arced uh, custom tools. Let's put that up. But you just want to test the assembler, right? The yes. Assembly. Yes. So wouldn't it suffice to just check the binary that the binaries are identical? The, the, uh, the binaries might not be identical because, uh, for example, GNU adds a bit more information in the ELF in the elf uh, in the object and then the best way how to do a comparison is at you know at the disassembly level again so you couldn't probably use read elf and extract the relevant data and just find yeah, out what the point is doesn't make any sense if I just disassemble it no but you're introducing an extra variable in the game right no but it's not because that is already tested okay. that it's an it's the disassembler is not mine it's it's a, 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 other one. It is another variable. But yeah, it's another variable, but. but it's still a so you're assuming the disassembly doesn't ignore any guess. Yeah. 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 yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, it's another variable that is making more probable to fail. So if it doesn't fail, it means that you're testing yet another thing. Yeah, but in the case of a failure, you're not really isolating the issue, right? You have to fail in both sides. Yeah. <laughs> it's even no, I would say that that's two different tests and I. So, so usually this, the tools, the ARC tools are, um, are uh, they should be certified, I don't know, IEEE, whatever. So they tell, told me that that tool which I use, I use for automotives. And they, they, it should be very rock solid. So yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so actually the testing, yeah. So indeed, it's. You can do it better, basically, but at the binary level, there are different problems because they are not 100% compatible. So, what about the syntax in the preference assembler? The preference assembler because it's the one same. Of the problems we have in the Spark yes. and the Spark uh, assembler is that we are also using this. Uh, yeah. Thingy. Yeah. And um, that doesn't quite implement that expression abstraction. It doesn't quite no, implement exactly what we are supposed to be implementing. Nah, it's, it's so if you compare the GNU assembler, Spark assembler, with the Studio, with the Polaris assembler, for example, we don't implement quite the same uh, kind of expression. Yeah. But this this test which I did here are very simple. Are only, let's say. Instructions. So I, I, you enumerate all the ads variants, like add register to register, register to immediate, register to short immediate, and so on and so forth. So it's you don't have a complex uh, use of uh, of uh, let's say the third party assembler. So 
So in that respect, the, the, the syntax, the syntax was uh, compatible between uh, GNU and uh, uh, RPAID uh, uh, assembler. So it, it's uh, probably uh, for, uh, for Spark is the same thing. I mean, if you make the, the, the assembly very easy, uh, simpler, then both, both assemblers are accepting the same syntax. So I, it's only, I tested only the instructions because the rest of the heavy stuff, I, I wrote deja vu tests, you know, the, the things which I thought that might, you know, break or are shaky or something like that. So there, you know, you just go to, to, uh, to an opcode and you look, okay, what are the, the variants of that code? And I just enumerate that, not fully, but I mean, I say, okay, I want a short immediate, 12 bits, I, you know, I want the long immediate, I want a relocation to see, and, yeah. It's, I yes, so. Is the instruction uh, database and generate available? The generator is available. Instruction database, we can provide you something, yes, obviously, which, which you use, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the. There might be DPL issues if the instruction <laughs> database wasn't available. No, no, but it's. Exactly. So it, it is. It is. So we have the the, the scripts. It's in the Git, GitHub. Uh, see Miranda. He is, and probably so we the, should the, add. The, the, scripts I made, the scripts are made in Ruby, so it doesn't make sense to actually publish next to Bill <laughs> or anything like this. But uh, they are publicly available on yes. GitHub. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if the, the database is. Still I haven't added it, but we should add it. We should add it. It's no problem. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, just one. Yeah. Dina. Do you plan to use like um, the database to generate patterns for Spark semantics with the challenges? Well, well, could you repeat the question so we get the next slide? If I can yeah. generate the pseudo inst the database yeah, the patterns, yeah. for pseudo instructions. Yeah. Uh, the database doesn't have information about the pseudo instruction. It has information only about the the instruction, the, the real instruction, so whatever it's implementing, uh, implemented in the ARC. So in this respect, uh, the, the database itself it's a, has a mismatch with the official uh, documents, ESA documents of ARC. So it's, it's limited in that respect, yeah. At the moment, the database is only generated out of the either information that we have in an Excel file. Yeah. And, but obviously, anything can be put there. Yeah, we want to extend it. I mean, what is there, it's, you know, we, we, it was a quick hack, basically. We wanted to do it in two months or three months. We did the, the bare metal, we did it in two months, isn't it? Yeah. Something like that. So we took more, the, the Linux part took more, BFD namely. Yes, Bjorn. Uh, so uh, did you think that long instructions um, can have the same semantics as uh, short instructions? Or do you have to um, generate your Okay, uh, the relaxation we did only in the assembler, and we used uh, uh, whatever is there. So basically, for this uh, relocation, we uh, we uh, replace the uh, the branch, for example, with short branch. So uh, it's. Yes. And the relaxation is it um, custom, uh, is it generally made, needs a specific list of instructions uh, so that doesn't work in the database. No, we, the, the, we, we, have <coughs> we have a separate table there. So we, which we say, okay, those are the uh, instructions which you can sep uh, relax. So we have long instruction, this relocation goes to this short instruction. If can be relaxed at assembly time, the relaxation has been done on only at assembly time, not in the extend which extensa does, which we, I love to do, but it's madness what is there. So uh, uh, we just use the whatever GNU assembler 
was provided. So this uh, relaxation stuff but was. Anyway. Hmm? Yeah, it's if you if you uh, relax and obviously for R seven hundred you have this problem of uh, of code alignment. Uh, that might not be you know we have an option, so that not might not be in the good idea. But for uh, Arc uh, V two EM and HS, as far as I know, there is no problem with code alignment. So therefore we can uh, we can we can relax. And we can change the alignment of uh, of instructions without hopefully losing performance. Graham, you said. Oh, no. Uh, so you ask me if if you want to work on a file, you, you need to use the tool. No, because those files, in the end, I manually edited because there were errors in the, uh, um, let's say, a couple of errors in the database. So we found easier just to hack in and to order correctly some arguments and stuff like that. So in that respect, no. So this is one of our you know, regret that we cannot actually always keep the tools in sync or with automatically. So always we need to do this. So this this is kind of future work which we try to do. I don't know when, but you are welcome. <laughs> Anyhow, you have like how many two thousand instructions to add to Arc? Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. We try to publish everything, so we are going to try to be open with everything. So there are variants of the of the ARC architecture. Yes. Do you encode all of those into one instruction database, or do you have multiple databases feeding in? Each instruction will have there a field which will tell you for which variant this instruction is valid, and then you have uh, you have the variant of the CPUs. Let's say. Uh, ARC 700 is uh, uh, V1 uh, and EMHS is V2. And on top of that, you have instructions which are not in the baseline. So then you get the, if you look to the card, to the data, to our stuff, you have the class and subclass of instructions. And then you can have floating point, which can be on and off, depending on you know what the customer wants. We have two flavors of floating point. Yorn uh, is one which, did the implementation for FPX, isn't it? Yeah. Just to, just to add, so, so the database is one, but the, the, the input file to the database, the CSV file that we feed in, can actually be uh, some, some, some small part that takes showing mm -hmm. the difference to yeah. our backend. Yeah, so it's the problem, yeah, there, there are some downsides here. It's like the database is not complete. That is the most, the most problematic stuff. And then you get, Usually you get the customers or you, you get other guys yelling, oh, this instruction doesn't work. Like uh, we have, I still have to add two instructions and we'll get my page. <laughs> so, uh, which was not basically in, in the database and I have to do some uh, manual implementation with it. Would you have a reference atom graph for every existing variant? <laughs> uh, I don't understand exactly, so how? No, 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 it's the same, it's the same thing. Like extended at a customer's request? No, no it's the same thing. The no, it's the same thing. It's everything in one. Why? Because you, you can, it's, uh, it's like having ARM and has like ARM, I don't know, M0 and A5. There is some difference there, I suppose, in opcodes. And it's a single, it's a single assembler. It's a the, single. The, the, the opcodes seem to be the same more or less. It's but the availability of the instruction. Yeah, it's more or less. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. 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 You disable one thing, you mm. enable another. They don't yeah. compete. Yeah. <laughs> yes? My understanding is this model can just be passed to the valid instruction, and copy it back to some 
Yep, so this is mainly handled uh, by uh, insert, and ex insert function. So in the insert function, it's actually receive, I think, an expression. No, not, it's already gone, the expression. So it receive an, uh, an, an immediate uh, integer number, and then based on what you want to do, I'm checking, so uh, if that number is correct or not, it, it is in range or not. So if, for example, if I have assigned 12 bits, then in the third function of that signed short uh, immediate signed 12 bits, I'm checking, is this signed 12 bits? If it's, if it's overflow, I think, I, uh, I think I give, we, give, we give an error, so. Yes, yes. Oh, to, to cut, oh, the other way around. No, no, sorry, I misunderstood, yes, no. So you wanted to search in the opcode, find the opcode which is not valid. Not valid. <laughs> yeah, no, that is a good idea. Yeah, that is very good idea. Yeah. How do you plan to generate compiler from this? It's, uh, so it's a compile, it's, uh, that it's even, <laughs> it's almost the same thing. So you, we, we plan to start for, for, from built-ins. Uh, um, built so built-ins basically are, it, it's just a name and some inputs and you know, the, the inst instructions which you use. Okay, I think I understand. Yeah. Like so you, you can look at the, the instruction operands and then you map to the, those instruction operands, you map them to instruction uh, constraints, to the instruction constraint letters. And then you have just a, a pattern for built-ins, it's just a pattern there. You just also say th those instructions should be generated because there is no equivalence in GCC backend for them, and you just generate them. And the nice thing is that you get a file like that and all the instruction variants, which are uh, in terms of. Uh, yeah, but for some instruction, would it have some meaning? Like add and shift? Then we have, so yeah, then I have to add, then I have to add, which is not in, <laughs> I have to add the semantic from the instruction. And then I know this is an add on 16 bit, this is a SI mode. And yeah, so. This is some exercise that actually both of us in different times worked in a, for Ericsson or. Yeah. Case SC Ericsson, and over there they they have architecture EVT, and they were doing that uh, that generation, not yeah. using databases, but using Perl scripts. But basically, instead of a database, they would have a bit table with uh, took two this functionality yeah. and the actual instructions, two. and they would be able to generate the, the, the compiler. Yeah, exactly. So it took two years, uh, two years, two months, two two good people. So it's like four, four, four years man, to actually get that thing done. So what I did here, it's one month, maybe less. So compared with that amount of time which those guys invested in that uh, methodology. So it, I know that is possible because I've seen <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. How long you wait for Boyd for implementing CGN, right? And yeah, but CGN cannot do anything for you <laughs> for when you do GCC. For example, yeah, but then how I sell this to my manager? <laughs> well, CJ input has semantic information. Yes, there. that is so true. It could, in theory, yes, be yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So it has, I think, first to extend CGN. I, I was actually considering because I was initially working in Yorn, Yorn it did some work there on the, uh, CGN. 
and I was finding, you know, two problems with basic CGN. So it's the problem which you nicely explain, explain it, and also it was the, my problem how I was selling this to my manager. <laughs> so because, yeah, I'm not proficient in CGN, so I had to uh, ramp it up, but the database thing, it was easy because I could say, oh, we already, we already have most of it and we can use it for GCC and, you know, it will be easy for any customer just to take all the tools and press the button and get the tools. So that was basically the story which I sold. Uh, and I got... <laughs> <laughs> but the but interesting stuff is coming. I mean, this is not the end of the conversation. We still have like six sli slides, seven. Yeah, let's swap it, huh? Okay. Uh, guys, uh, I, I can skip. Uh... No, no, but this is the most interesting stuff. No, come on. So you're just changing the attention now. So. So basically, the, the last couple of weeks, I worked on some idea that I got cooking on my head, is in, uh, how to simplify and uh, improve, not improve, but uh, do a better coding out of uh, this BFD and all these hook functions that are there. So, the, sorry? It's called code. Code. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so basically, uh, my expectations when I start porting would be that uh, I, w I could use BFD and basically I would have a linker for free that by introducing the relocations and so on. So, uh, a li little bit further, I realized that it would not be enough and uh, I would have to implement it like using ELF specific hooks. And, uh, and furthermore, I realized that many of the targets were actually copying code from one to the other, very similar, <laughs> doing the same and changing a little bit there and there. So in the end, uh, um, in the end, uh, the code seems very much alike. So there's a lot of code reusability, although through copy pasting, uh, I kind of jumped some of these topics. So I, so these hooks, uh, they are very much alike. And, uh, but there are also cases where you have different hooks that rely on very, very similar conditions to decide of what to do. And one of the examples is to, to, the, to increase the uh, section size to decide how many dynamic relocations you're going to get. And uh, the other one, the other hook actually filling the data into this uh, dynamic section. So in this, in, in this kind of uh, design actually if you change a little bit the condition on one side, you end up not calling the other side and then, then it creates a conflict. So following the idea of this table driven, we actually thought of like, this is a very short example of what could be done. And so uh, this, this short code, for instance, uh, has two things that it does, it do one and do two, right? Depending on the conditions. However, when you look at this, you, you feel like, okay, what's happening? How does it work? So what we want is actually to look at this thing and come up with a table with the conditions and protect these do one and do two. So semantically, it would be executing the same code. However, it's more appealing to the eye and it's easy to detect problems in the code. So this, this, this unidirectional, uh, the un single dimension table doesn't give much information. However, if we consider that the BFD relies on the relocation type to make a lot of decisions, then we can consider the rows to be these relocation types. So let me see if I forgot something. No. So in the, and having it in a table, you actually, it's, it's more formal and you can verify it uh, way easier. So this is a, a small piece of code that I took out of uh, our backend, the BFD, and it's just, something we have in the middle to print if a symbol is undefined. Actually, it's missing a condition up, up here to actually verify if the symbol is defined or not. But for the context of the experiment, <laughs> the, the, uh, of the example is irrelevant. So what we do is to actually classify each of these, uh, these um, 
conditions with the, with the name to simplify the conditions there. And what we do is actually have a table that would on the rows contain the, all the relocation types and the outcome of, of, for that condition. So it basically it means that if this condition is true, then it basically should end up in this, in this state in the end. And uh, so following up, there's too many variables here. So he's walking around. So for instance, this B and B and DC is actually specifying that the condition is a got or PLT condition. So they should basically disappear. Uh, and moreover, this code becomes irrelevant and can be replaced by something like this. So this is the kind of the, the idea that I was presenting here. However, it doesn't end here. Since uh, uh, filling, the, filling these tables is hard, there's a lot of repetition anyway. And, uh, and it might produce slower code because you end up having lots of these conditions hanging around. So it, on the counterpart, you, it's more formal. And if you have some, some part of the table that doesn't have a, a condition, it basically means it's unspecified behavior. You should set it to something, even if it's like an assert. So in the base of the idea was that, OK, a, a, a specific language to describe this table would make sense. And it should be reproduced firsthand before you actually compile the linker. So I come up with the four keywords or uh, three keywords plus if conditions. And basically, the outcome keyword allows you to define what type of thing you want to check. So it will be a, co a, a column in the table. The, the reloc group allows to give names to group of relocation types. You can, and basically, you can use a regular expression on the, the second argument to say, OK, I want all the relocation types that have a name got in it should be grouped in this group of relocations. And then you have this rule keyword that actually is the thing that fills the table. So basically, you provide the, the, a group of relocations or a relocation type name, and the outcome that you the condition is about and the condition itself. And so this thing would, would generate, like, would fill in a, a specific location in the table or a group of them with the specific conditions. Apart from that, in order to reduce the duplicate of the number of times that you actually write a condition in this, in this small language, I, I put these if else blocks to, protect, to, to just give the condition and then whatever rules you come inside, the, this condition would be appended to the, the table entry. So in the end, the same example as we did before could be represented with these rules and then with a, a similar code as shown before. So what I do here is say, OK, all, all reloc group, I create a reloc group that's called all that matches any relocation type, the got that matches any relocation type that has got, PLT the same thing. So the last match counts? The, what do you mean? Well, obviously the this one? Yeah. No, this all would mean all the relocations. Yeah, so, so it wouldn't match to have anything. Which includes those that, that, that have got in the name. Yeah, yeah. All would okay. include everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah the, these patterns are actually it's used there. Yeah. So and, uh, and so I, I, I produce an outcome. I said, oh, I want to, to have a column in the table that's called undefined. And then I specify the set of rules for each of the relocation types and what are the conditions. So after, after the, the parser goes through this thing and it generates like header files with macros of this, this could be static code that is included uh, in, the, in a BFT itself. And so we'll, we can use the conditions through that should expect this type of condition. So in the, the, this is a, just an example of, of uh, of the if statement that I don't use in this case is something useful for when we could use this completely. And this is basically it. Oh, oh, thank you for that. Anything else?
So that's a special case, indeed. Um, and that's it. <laughs> I don't have more slides. I'm just looking for, for the feedback. So the question is, what was we suppose? <laughs> that it's interesting or not? We, we started to do so because we, we tried to verify that our DAV, our backend, is correct. We had a lot of problems in uh, with peak and spy and whatever. Yeah, we still have some revoc but dynamic relocations that we are still yeah. generate yeah. arc none. And we don't know where it is. But is. Is it your plan to generate that language from your database? Uh, no, this this would not be from the the the, 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 lang the language is uh, is uh, so that I, I made a parser. Mm -hmm. Basically, I made a generator to that generates header for some yeah. couple of other files for this thing, and then. But but I thought the idea was that your database was going to feed into the BSD. Uh, it sounds like they've got a separate not 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 okay. not quite. So like this thing, it has to be separate. This this will define the behavior of BFD, not the instructions or what the ISA is. It's just uh, what I want is like to to have a nice way to say, okay, I want this relocation type to generate this address in peak uh, section and this PLT entry and things like that. And currently, it has to be hard coded there. And uh, in, in, uh, sometimes you actually have to put in different uh, hook functions. And that's where the problems start. So that's it. I think it's more productive to just try get conditions like if the symbol uh, uh, local labels um, introduction should be actually a process which is ongoing. I think some of the things that you have quoted as uh, examples of how bad it is, uh, how that helps. Yeah, the, the example is not uh, is not the best one, but uh, it's the one that fits the slide. <laughs> yeah, I understand the the the, the problem of uh, be you have another abstraction and. Uh, <laughs> so I, 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 I'm, I'm presenting this thing. I'm not saying that is the way to go in any way. So I'm quite new to say that. And uh, yes. You looked at the gold bookshelf. Uh, sorry. You looked at the gold bookshelf. No, no, I didn't. Why not? I, yeah, why not? <laughs> the good question. Well, the problem with the <laughs> is, it's encumbered with all this historical baggage that's built up where the gold is a lot fresher. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, actually, actually, in the BFD, we actually use this uh, concept of formula to define the the relocations. I was thinking, wow, I, this is innovative. This is good. And actually, yeah, looking to gold, and I found that ARM already defines something similar. It defines a macro with the formula for extending. I said, okay, and so. It, <laughs> but indeed, we didn't look at gold. It's uh, in our plans to port it as well, but we didn't. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But fortunately, it's a, it's a template, so we say, okay, we don't know exactly how your chip will look like, so you have to write your own uh, uh, linker script most of the time. Right? So, but uh, j j out, of, out, of, uh, out of your question, so gold has better ways to solve these issues or just inheritance uh, through C++ or? Yeah, I mean, Now, the, to be honest, when I open, uh, I, I think I'm opening the right files in gold, like uh, ARM, ARM uh, ports for gold, I still see a big file with lots of lots of functions, like uh, 10,000 lines of code, and I feel like 
okay, so it didn't improve that much, but uh, maybe that's. Arm, arm is kind of a complex case. Yes. Like the other ones are simpler. Like I don't know how complex that has to be. Um, it's uh, the FT and the level of crease, I think. If you know it, it's, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. probably it's not some gold. What matters is the number of relocations and what kind of process. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that mm -hmm. was the so the, the other thing I, I, I really didn't mention here was the when I look into relaxation, uh, this BFT also does relaxation on the way with the relocations and with through through bit matching and uh, bit replacing. And I, I, I really felt like, well, there should be a better way to, to do this thing. And the, the so how the, much space is there for the relocations? Uh, sorry? Uh, no, but I, I, I think you're, you're saying something different. So what I, what I was referring is that usually relocations are done by you have the, the you, you read from the section the, the, the instruction and then you do a, a, a bit matching of some particular pattern to see if you have these instructions. And then if you do, then you have a if case where you do some conversion of the, the, the instruction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the relocation is one way to 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 see if you actually can do some relaxation. But okay. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see how it turns out. <laughs> so uh, yeah, give me a couple of more months. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the 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 thing is that yeah, we have gold. Gold probably is the future. Uh, maybe no one is interested in actually putting uh, this BFT, clean it up. Uh, it would be also interesting for us to contribute something to other targets, but obviously it cannot be with our work because our manager doesn't allow it. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> so I'm I'm being pushed to leave. <laughs> Yeah, 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 sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you want to close this thing?